Okay, you're bad at math, so is there any hope? Well, if you stay tuned, I'm going to give you three reasons probably likely why you're bad at math, but there's hope. There's three things that we can also do about these reasons. But before we get uh, going, just tell you a little bit about myself. My name is John. I run various learning programs online, but uh, I've taught math. I'm a math teacher for many, many years, taught from middle school to college, have a degree in math, etc. I only tell you this because from years and years of experience working in a classroom online, um, you know, just studying this, you see trends and you start developing your beliefs. So what I'm going to tell you can be really, really important to you, especially if you want to improve in math. So let's get going. So your first reason and this may not apply to everybody, but the reasons I'm going to give you here, the three reasons are the, the most common reasons people, people are poor in math. So the first reason is you got on the wrong track early. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, in your past, when you were a kid, all right, you don't have, or you did not have much control of your life. Maybe you were put in not the best schools. Maybe you didn't have great teachers. Maybe you didn't have strong family uh, support. Uh, it can be any number of different reasons. So when you're young, you don't have control of your life too much, right? So you could have easily got yourself on the wrong track. Well, you found yourself on the wrong track, let's say. Um, and when you're young, you're, these are formative years. So if you're not having success with math and you're struggling, you know, this is powerful and it can stay with you for the rest of your life, even as early as one, sorry, first, first grade, second grade. Uh, and it doesn't even have to be um, continuous like um, these, like let's say your first grade, second grade, third grade year went fine. I've talked to people, a lot of people, they're a fourth grade year, and these are adults 50, 60 years old. They can remember back in their fourth grade year, fifth grade year, they had a bad teacher. It just takes one big event, disruption, and that could be with less than one academic year to throw you off on the wrong track. And many people don't get themselves back on the right track. So they start going down this path of not doing well in math. So. I find this to be the oft, uh, very often the case with a lot of people that really struggle math. Struggle in math is that somewhere in their past they they, they you know got off the track or early. Now, let's recognize a few things. In your past, as a young person, you didn't have much control over your situation, but now, okay, you do have con control. Okay, and I'm going to tell you right now, you can put yourself back on a good track to learn for success, okay? You don't have to stay on this this old track, okay, that wasn't getting you anywhere with math. So, But it's a conscious decision, all right? And you need to know the first great news is there is a path for success, okay? So you have to choose to believe that. And I want to take, I want you to kind of um, have faith in what I'm saying is that, you know what, there is a path and if you, you have to make that decision whether you're gonna get on that path uh, to be successful in math, okay? So that's the first thing. A lot of what I'm going to be talking about is your psychology, okay? And you have to change your belief system. You have to challenge them in your, in your mindset in order to do well, okay? And this is the problem with a lot of people early on. They got they got on the wrong track because it's their, it was their mindset. And that's going to lead us into our second reason that you may be bad at math, and that is you accepted your I'm bad at math self-image so early on or even you know in high school it doesn't make a difference somewhere along the line if you're walking around currently right now and you're saying I'm bad at math well that's because you accepted that self-image you know you're like okay yeah that sounds like me so again if you start labeling yourself all right then that's who you're going to be, okay? If you're bad at math, then you guarantee yourself that you're going to be bad at math. Now, I want to say this. I probably should have said this earlier in the video. With the exception of very severe learning disorders and the, the, the and special needs, etc., that type of thing, but those type of ex exceptions, and I'm talking about pretty severe things as well, where 
people have a tough time interpreting numbers and things like that, yes, of course, mathematics can be a very, you know, really challenging for them. But I wouldn't even classify that as being those pe people being bad at math. They're just struggling with a, a learning disorder that, ha that prevents them from learning. But if you don't have a learning disorder, uh, I'm telling you, 99.9% .9 of you can do very well in math. Now, other, of course, there's going to be some people that have math, strong math aptitude and are going to excel in math. But on average, most of you out there, 99.9% .9 of you, could learn uh, math even like up to calculus. You could learn up to calculus. You may be like, there's no way. Yes, you could. Okay, but even if you've dropped out of high school, I'm telling you, you, you can right but it, it's a process it's a multiple year process okay but if you're walking around with this I'm um, bad at math self-image you're not going to learn so this is what happens right so here you are and here's the teacher okay so if you're saying I'm bad at math it doesn't make so here's a student here's a teacher okay it, the teacher can be the greatest teacher in the world he's or she is just you know, awesome, and, and if you, uh, they got all the techniques and methods to really have you learn math. But when you have the psychology, I'm bad at math, it literally creates a barrier for you to, to even focus on what they're saying. And this stuff just bounces off of you, okay? Because you're in a bubble of this particular self image. Now, this happens in other areas of your life as well. So you need to kind of like destroy that. And I'm telling you right now, your self-image, you need to be like, hey, I'm a student at math. I'm going to learn this. And you can learn this. And you got to break down the barriers that you had previously had so you can kind of start allowing yourself to be, to learn again. Okay. And you got to take it one step at a time. You got to start from the very beginning. Okay. You have to just, it's like climbing stair steps. You just go up, 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 you know. You know, uh, think about it. If you go to school from elementary level, from first grade all the way through high school, that's 12 years. And then college, you know, it's an additional four years. So there's a lot to learn. But, you know, as an adult, you know, you're more mature. And I'm assuming that you're an adult or even if you're a young person, uh, middle school, high school, it doesn't make a difference. You have to make the decision, hey, I'm not bad at math. I'm a student at math. And I'm just, I need to find where I need, where I'm going to be learning from. It's like a ladder, okay? Let's use this analogy. Okay, here's a, a ladder, let's say. Some people are at this level on the ladder, okay? You may be on this level. It doesn't make a difference, but you can move yourself up the ladder. Just because this person's further along, that doesn't necessarily mean they're good at math, and then you're bad at math. You're just at a different level. You can progress upward, okay? But you have to make that choice to want to do it. You have to get on the track. You have to be committed. So with that said, let's go ahead and talk about our last reason that you're bad at math currently <laughs> and what you can do about it is you likely, you never really knew how to study math for success. Okay. So I find this as being a huge area as uh, for a lot of students. They're like, I'm bad at math. Well, you know, when I take a look at the work, Okay, or I'm I'm str you know they're frustrated and I'm not doing well. Is it the way they're working is not smart? They're working harder. They're not working smart. So let's talk about some of the traits of studying math for success. Okay, the first thing is being neat. All right, so be as neat as possible. Okay, it's, uh, neat, organized, etc. It's it's a huge, huge uh, reason when people are sloppy that they, they you just can't see the work. It's a it's a, a, a major reason why students don't do well. Okay, so if you don't break that habit and you don't try to make yourself as neat as you can it can be, then you're you're not being smart about how you're studying uh, math. You can't. Well, there's probably exceptions to everything, but 99.9% .9 of the time, sloppy students do poor in math. Neat students do, on average, pretty good to like very, very good and great. Okay, there's just correlations that I've seen <laughs> through through years and years and years, and even my own mathematics, you know, um, experience. So be as neat as you can. The next thing is notes. So, do you know how to take notes? Do you take notes? A lot of students think that oh, I don't want to take notes, or I'll take little notes, uh, scribble, scratch. Listen. 
Note taking is incredibly important to learn math correctly. You have to take great notes, not just notes. You got to take like the best notes in the class. You got to be the person that's like, oh, I want to copy from that person's note. Now, look, hopefully you're in a class with a great teacher. Okay, A great teacher will know how to present the material such that it's easy to take notes from, like let's say on a whiteboard or chalkboard or whatever the case is, you can take notes um, for whatever they're writing, writing down. So hopefully you you know you have a teacher like that. But if you don't, you're going to have to learn how to go pull that information for yourself. You need to have fantastic notes. The hallmark of having great notes is something where you could put away and uh, put the, put your notes away, and a month later you can pull them out and read them and just totally reteach yourself. Okay, so your notes need to be a self-teaching instrument. They got to be perfect, to be as perfect as you can make them. This is huge for retention. Okay, in other words, your your long-term memory. So the next thing is, in turning uh, in terms of uh, uh, studying math properly, is you got to show your work. Okay, show steps. Now, in other words, when you have a problem here, okay. And you're like, oh, I'm just kind of like kind of do it in my mind, and here's the answer right here, right? That's in between there is being lazy, okay? I don't want to show the work. Listen, you're not. That's not uh, a good way to study math. Guarantee you, you can't. Your mind can't just do all this mental stuff in in here, right? So have the discipline to show your steps. Now, how many steps should you sh uh, show? Well. Again, hopefully you have a great teacher, uh, and the teacher will kind of show you, will model out step by step by step by step, and this should be in your notes. So you want to model what the teacher is doing, okay, or the textbook showing, or you want to be showing those steps. This is not little stuff. This is huge stuff because these create the academic habits to properly study math. If it's um, it's like anything else. It's like the habit of not eating. Uh, well, let's say you work out in a gym, but then you eat a bunch of potato chips and hamburgers or whatever the case is. You could do, you could, you know, be in the gym active, uh, you know, exercising, but then you just ruin every, everything else by your diet. Same thing with math. You can be in the classroom wanting to kind of learn, but if you just go, you know, and you're not doing the other part of it, you know, correctly, those habits, if they're, if they're weak, then you're not going to get the results. I'm, I'm telling you right now, this is just um, this. I, nothing's absolute, but this is about as near as I've seen it. You know, over years and years and years, the consistency is, is mind-boggling. Okay, the students who succeed and the students who struggle. Okay, so take a look at your neatness, your notes, showing your steps. Okay, and the next thing is, you have to study. This might surprise you, a lot. You got to study a lot. A lot of people think that, um, well, if I just do my homework and that's enough. No. Okay. And this is probably, all these things probably apply to, um, you know, other subjects as well. But you got to study more than you think you need to. Okay. Especially in the beginning. All right. This is really important. So when you learn math or, or the way our minds uh, kind of work is when you learn something new, in order to get that into your longer term memory, you need to be reviewing it, practicing it consistently, very near the time you first kind of learned it. So, once you learn something, go. Don't delay on your homework, and then even after you did your homework, go back and review, you know, a little bit. You know, a few minutes. Review your, review your steps. You know, look at your notes. You got to really be immersed in this topic because obviously you're going to be learning new things. But if you just like learn it, do the minimal work then don't review it on your own, uh, it's not going to likely stick into your long-term memory that well, okay? And then what's going to happen is math builds upon itself, okay? You're going to have to recall previous it's previous skills that you learned before, and if you don't remember how to do that, you can't do the current material, so then, then you start going down this uh, wrong track, okay? It starts taking you down oh, this is frustrating. I learned that. I was good at that for a second. Now I, I forgot it, so I must be bad at math. No, you're not studying enough. Okay, you got to be in a constant review loop. You know, you got to be immersed. You have to be committed. And that's what it comes down to. It's, you know, you have to make the commitment to learn. 
Now, the great news is this. If you start uh, practicing these habits, you know, at first they might be difficult, but eventually you're going to find them just kind of naturally coming to you and you're going to start seeing success. Uh, I'm, I guarantee you you're going to do really well. So I'll tell you, you know, hopefully, you know, this video is really kind of maybe, you know, challenge your current mindset. Yeah, you might be mad, at, bad at math right now, whatever that means. You know, let's put that in quotes. Maybe you, you know, don't know a lot or maybe you couldn't pass a particular test. But all this is changeable. It's all absolutely changeable. And you have to make that decision. What are you going to do about it? Are you going to just stay permanently at math? Or do you have a reason why you need to improve? And if you're going to work at something, you might as well change your mentality because it's going to go to your, towards your self-confidence. And if you're, um, uh, you know, an adult and maybe have children, for I just, you know, please never reinforce in your kid, hey, that you can't do something or like, you know, you're bad at that. No, just that's language that you never want to use. So if you're not going to use it with your child, okay, or your your nephew or niece or someone else's kid. Why would you use that language with yourself? Okay, so let's turn it around and get great at math. And if this video helped you, please um, consider uh, subscribing my channel. You'll probably notice I do a ton of uh, math videos and stuff. I have a lot of uh, free uh, learning resources. And um, if you enjoyed it, obviously, give it a thumbs up. And let me know what you think. Okay, I'm always in a process of learning and getting feedback. And hopefully this uh, helps you out. So thanks for watching. Have a great day.